it all started when Kempegowda, a vassal of Vijayanagara Empire, built a mud fort in 1537, which still stands but was fortified by Tipu and then the British. But Bangalore has been a centre of affairs for a long time before that, to be precise, from 890 AD. A stone inscription found in Parvati Nageshwara temple in Begur near city has been dated back to 890 AD, written in Halaganada script, explaining the Bangalore war that took place in 1890, in which Bhutta Nachetti, an aide of Nagata, died. This was discovered by great historian R. Narasimhan in Epigraphy of Karnataka. This is the place where it all started, when the renowned historian R. Narasimhachar, an epigraphist, caught this part of inscription and decoded it, which is written in Halaganada, and deduced that this means that it's this inscription as a whole talks about the Bengaluru War in 890 AD. So here you can see some of the inscriptions and it says who fought, who was the king and who were their aides. Though not well preserved, this temple speaks historically if you visit this place. This temple complex that you see here, Nagareshwara temple, was decommissioned by Western Gangas around 800 AD. There is a very old stone inscription which says Bengaluru was a place of prominence back then in the reign of Western Gangas. This temple was decommissioned by Niti Marga 1 and was completed by Niti Marga 2, also called Ereyappa Niti Marga. This is one of the temple complex that you see, which is very old and there is another temple complex on the other side of the temple. There is also a description of Veeragallu in Mullahalli script. So this is the Veeragallu which was erected in respect of the warriors. You can see there is a warrior standing here. This was the Veeragallu. And there are some inscriptions over here which are in Halaganada which says who are the Veeras or the soldiers who fought and in whose memory this stone called Veeragallu was erected. This was erected right after the Bengaluru war in 890 AD. Bangalore was ruled by Western Ganga dynasty from 4th century to 10th century AD which was recorded. Slowly, as the affairs of geopolitical changes happened, Bengaluru in 1004 AD was captured by Cholas and years later in 1117 AD, Cholas were defeated by a great Hoysala king, Raja Vishnuvardhana in battle of Talakad to win Bengaluru. Coincidentally, it was his brother based on whom we have an anecdotal story of how the name of Bengaluru was arrived. It was Raja Veeraballala II who was lost in forest and tired. An old lady offered him boiled groundnuts and this came to be known as Bindakaluru. Bindakalu means boiled groundnuts and Bindakaluru means a place where he got boiled groundnuts which later was colloquialized to call Bengaluru. But even before this happened, the name is believed to have been taken from a tree based out of Bengaluru, which is called Benga or Venkai. Well, the story stands and the flora is forgotten. Kempegowda was sent as a vassal 
by Achyutadevaraya II of Vijayanagara Empire to defeat the Gangas. After defeating the Ganga Raja, Kempegoda wanted to build a stone fort, but Achyutadevaraya was afraid of the potential of Kempegoda and only let him build a mud brick fort. <laughs> This fort you see here was the first part which was constructed by Sri Kempe Gauda when he arrived in Bangalore in 1537. He was a vassal of Vijayanagara Empire but he was so strong that Raja Achyutadeva II who was the then Vijayanagara ruler was afraid of his potential and only let him build the brick and mortar or the mud fort and not the fort that you see today. The fort that you see today is clad with metals and big and thick rock stones which were built in a later period by Tipu Sultan and later fortified by the British. But this area that you see here, the fort that you see here is the main part of the first Kempe Gauda fort which was built using mud and bricks. Today, it may seem very peaceful for us, but this was not the situation when the fort was built. And years after that, even before the fort was built, Cholas occupied it around 1004 AD and the great king of Hoysala, Raja Vishnuvardhana or Bhikti Deva, captured Bengaluru in 1117 AD. And none of this existed back then, but in 1537, Kempe a vassal of Vijayanagara Empire, built this whole fort for protection. Kempe Gowda for many reasons has been known as the founder of Bengaluru and it is rightly so. He called Bengaluru Gandubumi or land of heroes. And here we are finally at one of the watchtowers built by Kempe Gowda himself. He built totally four watchtowers across the city, uh, preferably on the borders and this right there was one such watchtower. You can see that it's at an elevation, so the security guard standing over there can watch Bengaluru and that as a watchtower serves its purpose. Come, let's go and take a closer look at it. He took up administration and planning activities started building two tanks, Kempapura Lake, which is now converted into a bus stand, and Karanjikere, which is now the Kantirava Stadium, and four watchtowers, which were in Lalbag, Kempambudi Lake, Alsur Lake, and Makri Circle. It's so pensive to just sit here and watch around the city. I can assume how it would be by at the time of Kempe Gowda when he built this watchtower for watching all across the southern part of Bengaluru. Even now in this crowded place and uh, so many buildings here, I can see most of the city. Just imagine back then in uh, 1550, or 1545, 
how this watchtower would have been and what would be the beauty of Bengaluru back then. I'm sure the security guards would have enjoyed their part of duty here. He then divided Bengaluru into petes, which were called market. Chikka pete, which ran east to west, and Dudda pete, which ran north to south. The intersection of these two markets formed a square, which was the then heart of city, ever peaceful and ever thriving. Like all other prominent places, that start developing and flourishing, Bangalore wasn't immune to attacks. It was in 1638, captured by Shahji, a vassal sent by Sultanate of Bijapur and father of the great and glorious Chhatrapati Shivaji. Years later, Mughals captured Bangalore after capturing the Bijapur Sultanate under its commander Karim Khan, who defeated Venkoji Bonsle, the son of Shivaji, who retreated. Finally, in the year 1689, Mughals were no longer interested and sold Bengaluru to Chikkadevaraya Odeyar of Mysore for 3 lakhs. Then, in 1759, Hyder Ali was made the Jagirdar and Bangalore was given as a Jagir to him. British had set their eyes on Bangalore and wanted to siege it right from 1768 due to its geopolitical importance. But every time the effort was foiled by Mysore army. Tipu took over the administration of Bengaluru and also the Mysore kingdom and called himself as Sultan. This is the place where Tipu Sultan used to sit and mind his ministerial affairs. And this is the courtyard. He developed Bengaluru a lot, namely the beautification of Lalbagh with strategically and militarily developing Bangalore to be a major military operative centre. British couldn't capture Bengaluru in the first three Anglo-Mysore wars where they were badly defeated by the Mysore army headed by Hyder Ali first and Tipu Sultan in the next two wars. But finally in 1791, Bengaluru fort was captured by Cornwallis. The stone inscription still stands to this day. Bangalore played a prominent role thereafter in resisting Tipu Sultan till 1799 when he was killed in the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. Finally, figuratively, Bangalore was handed over to Odeyars and so was the Mysore throne. <laughs>